5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are ones of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor is brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be prayed to the ends of the earth, and shall he and he shall be the one of peace. Yet no matter how hard they try, everything 
seems to go wrong. You would think that initially the most important aspect of Christmas for Chevy Chase, who plays the main character, the father, Clark Griswold, is the biggest, greatest Christmas tree. Or the house that has more lights than any other house in the town. The best meal that could be provided, or the greatest gift you could give your family because of that Christmas bonus you received. But many of you who have seen the movie know this, and for those of you who haven't, spoiler alert. In the end, Clark recognizes that the most important aspect of Christmas is being together with one another. Even if that means spending time with your oddball cousin Eddie and his family, and your eccentric parents and in-laws, all who are a far cry from ordinary. Christmas is not just the season of giving, it is also the season of receiving. It should serve as a reminder that we need to be humble enough to receive gifts that are offered to us. Then, like Clark Griswold, we may be surprised at the gifts that may come in the form of opportunities for community and connection and fellowship with people you wouldn't normally expect. And in order, though, to recognize these gifts, we should be open enough and able to discern that these are even gifts being given to us. In today's Gospel reading, we hear from Luke, the witness of the story of an unlikely relationship because of Mary and Elizabeth's willingness to be open to the gifts that they were about to receive, the gift of community and connection something they both were in dire need of. Now, as Barbara had mentioned, this scripture picks up right after the angel's visit with Mary, and she is told of the pregnancy by the Spirit, and she says, let it be to me according to your word. I, I can only imagine how Mary must have felt. It must have been a gush of emotions, fear and doubt, and yet hope and peace. Now many people who have discerned a call in their lives turn to others for affirmation. It's a need of being human. We want to connect with another person who has had a similar experience, or who in some way can relate to our own. Mary is an unwedded mother woman, and engaged, and after learning that she's about to have a baby, she takes the first chance she can get and runs off to her relative Elizabeth's house, who she had just heard was also miraculously pregnant. Now keep in mind, the angel did not tell her to go there. She, the angel only told her that her relative was miraculously pregnant. It was Mary's choice to quickly go off and see this relative who was in a similar situation. Likely because Mary had that desire to be connected to someone with a similar experience. After all, if anyone in her town or her soon-to-be husband found out she could be What is most interesting about this story is that the only connection between these two women were two things, the pregnancy and the fact that they were relatives. They're actually very different. Elizabeth is married, has been wedded for a long time, she's older, and this baby inside of her was something that has been long hoped for. Mary, on the other hand, is young, unwed, and was definitely probably not hoping to have a baby before she was married. Now in Luke 1.6, which was not read this morning, we are reminded that Elizabeth lived her life in perfection. 
action blamelessly is what the scripture says. So we would expect that she would have probably spoke harshly to Mary about being pregnant before you're married and how that is not right to do. That's not what happens. Instead, Elizabeth perceives the spirits moving through the kicking of the child in her womb. And her reaction is that of humility. Why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Elizabeth forwent the holier than thou attitude that she could have easily taken and opened herself up to receive the Spirit's moving and accepted that gift of opportunity for community with Mary. This gift was a mutual gift that the Spirit gave to both Mary and Elizabeth because they were humble, and they opened themselves up to the Spirit's work, and then willingly put aside their fears, their prejudice, their doubts, all for the sake of that connection and community. In this story, the Holy Spirit speaks to Elizabeth through the kick of the baby in her womb. Now I imagine that many of you are likely, like me, in that you have felt the Spirit kick you or nudge you to open yourself up for something. But out of fear or doubt or even prejudice. We fail to open ourselves up to accepting the gift that the Spirit is guiding us towards. What do you think would have happened? If Elizabeth had just chalked up this baby's kick to some normal aspect of pregnancy, for those of you who are mothers, it wouldn't be a far cry to say this because you would know that these unexpected kicks come when you are not prepared. Spirit's 
work to accept that gift of opportunity for connection and community. Are there times when you need to put aside your fears, your doubts, or prejudice, and take hold of the gift that the Spirit is offering? Today's Gospel story is a pre-Christmas gift to us about the genuine connection of community formed between two pregnant women from very different generations. And just like Clark Griswold accepted his gift of opportunity and learned that Christmas was about community and connections, Mary and Elizabeth accepted their gift from God by humbling themselves, opening themselves up to the Spirit and being responsive to that gift of opportunity. And like Clark Griswold, in community they began to see their role more clearly than they would have been able to do individually. This is an Advent message of hope, joy, peace, and love. All because they were able to be humble, open, and responsive to the Spirit's work by accepting that good gift from God. When we aren't open to the Spirit's work, we fail to engage in communication which is necessary for connection and community. If we ignore or reject the Spirit's moving, we fail to accept a gift from God for the opportunity in which God may be giving us in order to share the best gift of all that we remember this time of year, Jesus Christ. Let us remember to be like Mary and Elizabeth by opening ourselves up to connecting our story with God's larger story. Let us remember to be like Mary and Elizabeth by humbling ourselves, by opening ourselves up to the Spirit and accepting the gifts of opportunity in this Christmas season and in all times. For the sake of Christ's gospel.